So in thrillers, the antagonist is usually someone who's intent on annihilation or devastation or power at the expense of others. So they're usually incredibly clever and powerful, and in most cases, they can't really be reasoned with. So they're kind of far beyond the realm of reason. So some examples of a master antagonist would be someone who's a savvy criminal or a serial murderer or a master manipulator. So someone who is just really good at what they do. Welcome to the Fiction Writing Made Easy podcast. My name is Savannah Gilbo, and I'm here to help you write a story that works. I want to prove to you that writing a novel doesn't have to be overwhelming. So each week, I'll bring you a brand new episode with simple, actionable, and step-by-step strategies that you can implement in your writing right away. So whether you're brand new to writing or more of a seasoned author looking to improve your craft, this podcast is for you. So pick up a pen and let's get started. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the conventions of the thriller genre. I'm also going to show you how these genre conventions show up in the movie Silence of the Lambs. So if you're writing a thriller novel or a story with a thriller subplot, then this episode is for you. And if you're not writing a thriller, don't worry because I'm going to cover each of the other genres very soon. Now, before we dive in, let's quickly talk about what makes a thriller story or what makes the thriller genre unique. Thrillers are popular fiction for a reason. They combine all the criminality and suspense of a good detective novel with the danger and life and death stakes from the action or horror genre. The protagonist in a thriller is usually tasked with preventing a future crime. So usually there's already been at least one crime committed and now the protagonist has to stop future crimes from happening. Usually the protagonist knows who the villain is from the beginning, but sometimes they don't. People choose to read thriller novels because they want to experience all the thrills of trying to outsmart and stop the villain before he or she commits any more crimes. They want to see someone who's more or less ordinary go up against a master villain and come out the other side. And they want to do all of this from the comfort of their own couch. And like all genre fiction, you have to deliver the emotional experience readers are looking for in order for your story to work. So to deliver this emotional experience, you need to include the obligatory scenes and conventions of your genre in your novel. So as I mentioned earlier, in today's episode, we're going to look at the conventions of the thriller genre. And in case you've never heard this term before, genre conventions are these character roles, settings, and events that are specific to one genre. They help us write a story that works, and when coupled with the obligatory scenes of your genre, they help us to evoke certain emotional reactions in our readers. Now, let's take a look at what these thriller genre conventions are and how they show up in the movie Silence of the Lambs. And if you're wondering why I'm going to walk you through these key scenes in a movie, it's just because movies require less of a time investment, and I'm hoping you've either seen Silence of the Lambs or that you'll at least watch it after listening to this episode so that you can really cement these genre conventions in your mind. And of course, you can and should study these conventions in your favorite thriller novels, but today we're going to focus on what they look like in a movie. As I go through these conventions, I want you to consider why each of these roles or settings or events would need to be in a thriller novel or what purpose they serve in the overall narrative. I think you're going to notice that each of these conventions has a really specific why behind it or a reason why it needs to be there. And because of that, it should be pretty easy for you to use these conventions plus the obligatory scenes of the thriller genre to help you craft an outline or a first draft of a story that works. And one more quick reminder, if you want to see how these key conventions show up in a few other stories, you can check out the blog post that goes along with this episode that also includes examples from Misery and Gone Girl. I'll make sure to link to that blog post in the show notes for you guys, but for now, let's dive into what the conventions of the thriller genre are. The first convention of the thriller genre is some kind of crime. And not just any crime, but a crime that indicates that there's a master villain on the loose. So somebody who seems to really know what they're doing. And in most cases, this villain has committed other crimes before the story starts on page one. Like in a serial killer thriller, for example, usually the serial killer has killed people before the story starts. And usually in a thriller, the protagonist feels the threat of a future crime that the antagonist or the villain is planning on committing. So in most cases, the villain has already committed a crime and is then planning to commit more crimes. So looking at The Silence of the Lambs, for example, we learn that the senator's daughter, Catherine Martin, has gone missing and that the FBI thinks she might have been kidnapped by a serial killer they're calling Buffalo Bill. So this is the crime that kicks off the story and brings Clarice into the picture. 
It's also not the first time Buffalo Bill has done this. The second convention you're going to want to include in your thriller is at least one victim. So this could include anything from dead bodies to hostages or missing persons or anything like that. So it's just anyone who's on the receiving end of the antagonist's crime. In Silence of the Lambs, we know that Buffalo Bill is holding Catherine Martin hostage in a pit in his basement, right? We also know that he's a serial killer, so that means he's probably planning on killing Catherine Martin. And not only that, but there's likely going to be more victims if the FBI doesn't stop him. The third convention you're going to want to include in your thriller is a master villain or a master antagonist. So in thrillers, the antagonist is usually someone who's intent on annihilation or devastation or power at the expense of others. So they're usually incredibly clever and powerful, and in most cases, they can't really be reasoned with. So they're kind of far beyond the realm of reason. So some examples of a master antagonist would be someone who's a savvy criminal or a serial murderer or a master manipulator. So someone who is just really good at what they do. In Silence of the Lambs, Buffalo Bill is the master antagonist. So he's obsessed with kidnapping and killing women so that he can make his woman suit. And at this point, he can't be reasoned with. He's not going to stop killing until his nasty little project is complete, right? Hannibal Lecter is also a master antagonist, but since he's already been imprisoned, the one we're going to focus on here is Buffalo Bill. The fourth convention you're going to want to include in your thriller are some clues and red herrings. So throughout the story, the protagonist is going to follow a trail of clues in order to find and or trap the master antagonist. And some of these clues are going to be true clues, meaning they lead the protagonist closer to the truth. But most of them are probably going to be false clues or red herrings that temporarily misdirect the protagonist and the reader. So in Silence of the Lambs, Clarice Starling follows a trail of clues and red herrings that are mostly given to her by Hannibal Lecter. She has to then sort through these true clues and these false leads to uncover the truth about Buffalo Bill's identity and his whereabouts. Meanwhile, the FBI is following their own set of clues and red herrings with the intention of finding Buffalo Bill before he kills Catherine Martin. The next convention you're going to want to include in your thriller is some kind of speech in praise of the villain. So this is basically a moment where one or more characters is talking about how brilliant or powerful the antagonist is. And sometimes this can be shown as a conversation between two people or through letters or a newspaper article or some kind of news report on TV. So something like that that just conveys the brilliance of the antagonist or the villain. This moment can also happen in the form of a revelation where the protagonist pieces together bits of information about the antagonist and they realize just how smart or powerful or bad this person that they're up against really is. So in Silence of the Lambs, this speech is delivered by Jack Crawford and Clarice Starling as they're riding together in the car. So they're talking about Buffalo Bill, and Jack Crawford is talking about how he usually keeps his victims for three days, and then he shoots them, skins them, and dumps them somewhere. He usually puts each body in a different river because the water doesn't leave any trace evidence. And then Jack asks Clarice what she thinks about Buffalo Bill, and she kind of says... Well, he's a white male. He's probably got his own house somewhere. He likes to take them somewhere where he can have privacy with them. He's probably got, you know, a lot of physical strength combined with an older man's self-control. He's cautious, precise, and he's never impulsive. He's never going to stop. He's got a real taste for it now, and he's getting better at his work. So through their conversation, the reader gets a real sense of what Buffalo Bill's like and why he's evaded capture for so long. The next convention you're going to want to include in your thriller is some kind of MacGuffin. So a MacGuffin is the antagonist's object of desire. So it's the thing that he or she is trying to get, accomplish, or achieve throughout the story. And usually the crime at the beginning of a thriller contains some kind of clue about what the antagonist MacGuffin might be. So in Silence of the Lambs, we eventually learn that Buffalo Bill wants to create a woman suit made out of human flesh. So that's his MacGuffin or the thing he's pursuing throughout the story. Clarice eventually puts this together when she's in Belvedere, Ohio, visiting his first victim's house and hometown. And once Clarice understands what Buffalo Bill is after, it gives her a whole bunch of new insights into who Buffalo Bill is. The next thing you're going to want to include in your thriller is a character who's a shapeshifter. So a shapeshifter is someone who says one thing and does another, and usually their behavior directly impacts the protagonist's mission to find and stop the antagonist. 
So in Silence of the Lambs, there are a few good shapeshifters. We have Buffalo Bill, who literally wants to change his shape and become a woman. There's also Dr. Chilton, who pretends to be a helper, but really has his own weird agenda. And then, of course, we have Hannibal Lecter, too. So we have quite a few shapeshifters in that story. The next thing you're going to want to include in your thriller is some kind of ticking clock or deadline by which the protagonist has to figure out who the antagonist is and then stop them from doing more harm or committing more crimes. So in Silence of the Lambs, Clarice knows that Buffalo Bill typically kills his victims within three days. That means if they don't find Catherine Martin before the three days is up, she's going to die. So that's her deadline to find Buffalo Bill and to stop him from killing Catherine and other victims in the future. The next thing you're going to want to include in your thriller is you're going to want to have multiple lives at stake. So the thriller genre is all about life and death stakes. Either the protagonist is going to survive or the antagonist is going to survive, but usually not both. So if you fulfill the victim convention that we talked about earlier, you're going to have at least one life at stake and then probably your protagonist's life is going to be at stake when he or she confronts the antagonist. So in almost every thriller, you're going to have at least two lives at stake, sometimes even more. And that's actually one of the biggest differences between thrillers and mysteries, because usually in a mystery, the protagonist's life is not at stake as they try to figure out who done it. But in a thriller, the protagonist's life is at stake as they try to figure out who's behind these crimes and or how to stop this person who's behind the crimes. So just something to note there. In Silence of the Lambs, Catherine Martin's life is at stake, so we know she's going to die within three days if Clarice and the FBI don't find Buffalo Bill. Near the end of the story, when Clarice confronts Buffalo Bill, her life is at stake too. She knows that Buffalo Bill is more than capable of killing her, and when he turns all the lights off, it gets pretty sketchy for her. So I think it's pretty safe to say that she knows only one of them is going to make it out of that basement alive. The final convention you're going to want to include in your thriller is a false ending. So at the end of a story, this is when everything seems to be over and done, but the antagonist rebounds to challenge the protagonist one final time. And I think this is my favorite convention of the genre. I don't know why, but it is. It's something about having to top your own climactic moment or plan two final battles between the protagonist and antagonist that I think is just kind of fun. But anyway, in Silence of the Lambs, this is when Clarice Starling calls Jack Crawford to tell him about her lead in Ohio. He tells her not to worry about it because they've already found Buffalo Bill and they're about to confront him. This is a false ending because when the FBI knocks on the door, they realize that the house is empty. And meanwhile, Clarice shows up at James Gum's house and realizes that he's actually Buffalo Bill. So this is the final confrontation between Clarice and Buffalo Bill, and it's clear that only one of them is going to make it out alive. So those are the conventions of the thriller genre, and you might be thinking, okay, yes, some of those are kind of obvious. I already knew some of those, but you'd be surprised how many drafts I see that are either missing these conventions or don't really hit on these conventions in a meaningful way. So a lot of times they're kind of either glossed over or they're just not these impactful moments that readers are really hoping to see. You might also be thinking, okay, these sound good, but I don't want to write a cliche or predictable story full of tropes. And if you're feeling that way, I'd encourage you to go back and listen to episode number 16 that's all about the differences between genre conventions and tropes. That episode talks about how including these genre conventions in your story is not what's going to make your story cliche or predictable. They're just really going to help you write a piece of genre fiction that works and delivers on what readers are expecting. And really, it's the way that you deliver these conventions that can fall into cliche territory if you don't put your own unique spin on them. But again, you can learn more about that in episode number 16, which I will link to in the show notes for you guys. Okay, so let's quickly recap what those thriller genre conventions are. So first, you're going to want to have a crime and not just any crime, but a crime that indicates there's a master villain or antagonist on the loose. Number two, you're going to want to have victims. So there's usually at least one victim of the initial crime. And then at some point, your protagonist is probably going to become a victim as well. Number three, you're going to want to have a master villain or a master antagonist who is smart and powerful and clearly knows what they're doing. Number four, you're going to want to have clues and red herrings. So you're going to want to have a mix of true clues that leads your protagonist closer to the truth and then a handful of red herrings that misleads and distracts the protagonist and the reader. 
Number five, you're going to want to have a speech in praise of the villain. So this is just either two characters talking about how smart and powerful the antagonist is, or it could be a news report or anything like that that just delivers this kind of information. Number six, you're going to want to have a MacGuffin. So this is something specific that the antagonist is after. Number seven, you want to have at least one character who acts as a shapeshifter. So a shapeshifter is someone who says one thing and does another. Number eight, you're going to want to have a ticking clock or some kind of deadline on when your protagonist has to deal with the problem of the antagonist by. Number nine, you want to have multiple lives at stake. So like we talked about earlier, this is going to be at least one victim whose life is at stake. And at some point, your hero's life is going to be at stake when they confront the antagonist or the villain. And finally, number 10, you want to have some kind of false ending. So right when it appears everything is going to be all fine and dandy, the antagonist makes their last ditch effort. And as a quick reminder, these are the story elements that readers come to thrillers for. So these are the things that readers love. And like I mentioned earlier, I personally love that thrillers have false endings. So if I was reading a thriller novel or watching a thriller movie and there wasn't a false ending, I'd probably be pretty disappointed. And I'd probably walk away from the movie or the book feeling like something was off or something was missing. So long story short, just try not to do that to your readers. Don't skip over these conventions or leave them out of your story. Instead, use them to help you flesh out and construct your story and then figure out a way to deliver these conventions in new and unexpected ways. And if you do that, you're not only going to write a story that works, but you're probably going to gain fans for life too. And that's the dream, right? So that's it for today's show. As always, I want to thank you so much for tuning in and showing your support. If you want to check out any of the links I mentioned in this episode, you can find them over at savannagilbo.com forward slash podcast. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the show because there's going to be another brand new episode coming out next week. If you're an Apple user, I'd really appreciate it if you took a few seconds to leave a quick rating and review. Your ratings and reviews tell iTunes that this is a podcast that's worth listening to. And in turn, that helps this show get in front of more fiction writers just like you. So that's it for today's show. I'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Until then, happy writing.